She's through on goal now, can she finish, get a hat-trick? Yes she can, and it's 3-2 to Cardiff City. Shumai, good afternoon. Welcome to Cardiff Met Sport TV. And today we have a live up the archer coming here from King Coyd campus. We have an action packed show, but before we jump into it, let's throw to Gabriella Dukes, who has a roundup of all the sports news stories this week. Starting with cricket, and Glamorgan and Kent were left disappointed yesterday as heavy downpours resulted in a match being abandoned. On to netball now, and it's been announced that fans will be permitted into Celtic Dragons' final matches in the Vitality Netball Super League, beginning this week. The next play London Pulse this Friday. Moving on to basketball now, and Archer Maisie Harry from Barry has signed for PSA Girls Hoops in Connecticut. She'll make the move this summer. There was plenty of football on this weekend, and Swansea City will be playing Brentford in Wembley for a place in the Premier League this Saturday. They drew one all with Bansley, securing a 2-1 aggregate win. Newport County have also made it to Wembley for the League 2 playoff final after an extraordinary 5-4 aggregate win over Forest Green Rovers. And finally, yesterday the FAW's Under-16's Girls' Cup final took place in Newtown between Penryn Bay and Barrytown United Ladies. Barrytown came out on top and this match made its mark in history as the only domestic cup final to take place in Wales this season. And that's it for the news, back to the studio. And we're back in the studio and Gabriella has joined us. Welcome Gabriella, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Thanks for having me in the studio. Absolutely no problem. Now what a week of sporting action. It's been Masters, golf, it's been the football. What's been your sporting highlight? I think for me it's definitely seeing fans back in stadiums. Of course there was fans in the Swans game, in the Newport game and you know two Welsh teams going to Wembley. How amazing is that? Oh it's absolutely fantastic. You know, my dad's a long time Swan supporter. Unfortunately he missed out on tickets but he got to watch it on TV and it was, it was a great event. And you were also at the FAW final, women's final on the weekend, weren't you? How, how was that? Yeah, so that was an amazing experience. You know, there was no fans, sadly, for the girls, but it was the FAW and the 16s Girls Cup final, the only final um, taking place in Wales this season, which was an amazing achievement for the girls. And uh, Barry Town uh, took took the win. Uh, it was 4 3 to them, but it was a very close game, you know. Um, Penryn Bay, they, they did come back, they fought back a few times, but in the end, um, yeah, it was Barry Town that took took uh, the cup but you know torrential rain fair play to the girls they fought their way through the wind the rain but it was a great day I think for everyone in the end fantastic and speaking of women's sporting events there was the King Coyd uh, no, the women's uh, league cup semi-final here at King Coyd Cardiff City beat Cardiff Met 3-2 in a pulsating game so here are all the highlights from that match <laughs> Got no money, he's got his strong beliefs. My lover's got no power, he's got his strong beliefs. My lover's got no fame, he's got his strong beliefs. My lover's got no money, he's got his strong beliefs. Finches pass cleared by Daly, and there's Phoebe Poole looking to get on the end of this again. Danger for Cardiff Met. Poole, oh, and another strong stop, but Poole on. Poole puts the ball in the back of the net, and Cardiff City lead 1 0. That threat we were talking about, Tom. Annabelle Sweeney looked like she'd done enough to clear the danger, but just couldn't prevent that ball from rebounding to, to Phoebe Pill. And you see there, she tucks that one away. And Mary was aiming to put it in there, but Hancock finds Long. Oh, and it's in the back of the net. It's a goal from Amy Long, and Cardiff met her right back in this. Be too worrying too much about going a goal down, and they've certainly proved that they've had a couple of encouraging attacks since they can see that. Yeah. The, I, I'm trying to think when this game is going to settle down at some point. I'm not saying I necessarily want it to, but obviously, you know, both teams. Here's Atkins, so that long ball from Hastings. Atkins, and it's a save from Sweeney, a really good save. Pinder, who pressurises again. Daly just lumps the ball forward. There's Walsh in the box. She gets the ball. 
It does go a little bit too left for her. Back to Atkins. Puts it in first time. And it's pull again. Oh, it's in the bottom left corner. Initially, which is poor, and then the, the marking was non-existent, and Phoebe Poole has popped it there in the centre of the goal. Peels for a free kick, but no foul given. Hutton Townsend finds substitute Evans, who finds Murray. Oh, and it's an equaliser for Cardiff Met. Looked close to with the offside call, but I think that's the correct decision. There's a good intricate ball there from Shannon Evans, and so is Murray. Evans puts it across. Murray's there and it's headed off the line. Well, that's it. well just looking at this replay, great save originally from Hastings. Cardiff met attacks down the right in the first half, but we're seeing them balance it up a bit more here in the second, and perhaps that was a move. Broadhurst plays the ball forward for Pull. She's through on goal now. Can she finish? Get a hat trick. Yes, she can, and it's 3 2 to Cardiff City. Phoebe Pull has a hat trick. The archers, and she's done exactly that. Could potentially lead to a side win in this game, but. Yeah, it's a su superb minutes, and even before that, uh, Phoebe Paul goal just went in. Well, Paul plays Jazz Simpson through. She's onside, she's through on goal. Can she make it four? Oh, and a great save by the onrushing Sweeney. Oh, and it's all over here at King Coy Campus. Cardiff City can celebrate as they go into the WPWL Cup final. Cardiff Met lose at King Coy Campus for the first time since 2019, and they will surely be disappointed. Now I'm joined by football correspondent Jordan Jones. Jordan, welcome. Thank you, Chris, for having me today. Uh, now that result potentially leaves Cardiff Met trophyless. What have you made of the Welsh women's season so far and who do you think is going to win the final on Wednesday? So Swansea City have a team to beat. They had a team that can claim a league and cup double and I do think it's going to go their favour. They beat Cardiff City 6-0 in the dress rehearsal on Sunday and it just shows how good that team is. Cardiff Met, well, they're top of the league, but they know that probably the title is going to end up at Land Arcee. But great season for Chloe O'Connor. She's in the race for the Golden Boot with four goals against Aberystwyth. So hopefully from an Archer's perspective, we do see Chloe O'Connor claim some silverware for the Archers this season. Yeah, fantastic by Chloe O'Connor. So moving on from the, the women to the men, uh, Carnarvon Town play Newtown in the uh, final for a place in the Europa Conference League. How do you see that one going? This one is the unlikely final, I'd imagine. I predicted Carnarvon actually to finish in the relegation zone this season. No relegation this season, but uh, unlikely of them to see them in Europe. And of course, if Carnarvon qualify, it'll be the first time that they ever touch the continent in regards to football like that. Newtown, a bit of experience. I think Newtown, perhaps, even though they finish below them in the table, might be the favourites just based on the fact that they've got players who are experienced and know what it means to get into Europe and also play in Europe. So I'm saying Newtown are probably the favourites for me, in, in Saturday's game, but kind of, and they've got some good players like Mike Hayes, and they've got Aaron Thomas, the Covey Messi, and I think if the fans can get in, if there's some way the Welsh Government can allow them to come in, that'll play a factor, of course, in kind of, and qualifying for Europe. And on the same day, it's a playoff final, Swansea City are playing Brentford, and also two days later, Newport are playing Morecambe. How do you see those results going? So it's, it's a repeat then of the last year's semi-final between Swansea and Brentford. And for me, it would be a disaster if Brentford didn't go after the last few years under Thomas Frank. One of the best footballing teams in the division, some great players and a nice, unique recruitment policy. Um, so for them, I'm saying Brentford are favourites. But everyone has written off Swansea City and they've really gone under the radar. Andre Ayew is the man leading the charge for them in promotion. But who, who knows? I think Swansea City could ups, rustle a few feathers and perhaps upset the odds. And of course, with Newport then as well, um, who predicted that? Who would predict that Newport would get into the playoffs? Um, and the way that it happened as well, such an entertaining game against Forest Green Rovers. And hey, it could be Kevin Ellison against Derek Adams, of course, who Derek Adams allowed Kevin Ellison to leave Morecambe. And Ellison could return to haunt his former manager. Uh, it was two fantastic games, I agree with you there, Jordan. And a huge uh, summer of football for Wales with the Euros. What do you make of the recent squad announcement? Yeah, so Hal robson Carney and Will Volks aren't in the squad. Bit of a shock, of course, everyone knows what robson Carney did in the last tournament. He has that experience, but it seems that Rob Page is going to turn to the younger players. Now, he didn't have that kind of experience, and you just have to look at the young players like David Brooks, Tyler Roberts, players who didn't play lastly, but they could offer something. Will Volks perhaps is a mystifying a mission from the squad I'm, I'm a bit shocked that he isn't included he's played a lot for Cardiff City this season but he's been not in being included in a number of squads now it just seems that perhaps his Wales career is falling down before he's already begun thank you very much Jordan now from one 
uh, sporting competition to the other. This summer is the Olympics. Uh, Jenny Nesbitt caught up with a fellow student and long distance runner, Charlotte Arter, as she prepares to try and make the uh, Japan. Running has taught me so many things. Um, you have to deal with setbacks and adversity, but also the pure joy you get from reaching your goals and the people you meet along the way and you train with and the places you get to, to travel to. It means a lot running and I think I'd be absolutely lost without it. Um, as a junior, running was always just fun and there was no pressure put on me to perform. As you say, I was finishing just inside the top 100 at English schools, so it was no way near making any Great Britain teams as a junior. It's dedication over the years, um, you know, started at 11 and I got my first GB vest at the age of 26. Um, so it was a very long, long journey and I just think if you put all your effort into it and keep working year on year and put the time into it, then you can, you can achieve those goals. Currently on a career break, well, coming up to the end of my first year, which I've actually extended for another year, so hugely grateful to Cardiff University for the opportunity to, to live life as a full-time athlete. And I think it came to a point where I was starting to make major championship teams and I kind of didn't want to look back in 10 years' time um, and regret not giving full-time athletes life a go. I think it just means I can put more time and effort into all the little things that I didn't really have time before. I mean, breaking any record is, is pretty awesome and to, to have it over the half and the 10K, I'm absolutely delighted to hold those records and, and put your name down in the history books. Which one I think, I'm not sure, I guess maybe the half marathon because that was my first Welsh record and I think a bit of a breakthrough performance for me earlier in the year. Um, but then to back that up with a 10K as well, equally as, uh, <laughs> equally as fond. Um, obviously there's been some incredibly fast Welsh athletes over the years, so to be named the fastest Welsh athlete over half marathon and 10k is, is pretty cool and hopefully I can take another chunk off those records in years to come. <laughs> I mean if someone asked me even two or three years ago if the Olympics was a possibility, it still wasn't, everyone has a dream to go to the Olympics but realistically I didn't know whether that was possible. But over the last year I guess you've got to believe that, you, that with the time I ran in Leeds, only being nine seconds off the standard, that you can make that I'm in the shape to run that sort of time. So hopefully if things keep progressing the way they are and, and stay in free free, then, then I'll give it my best shot to try and run that standard. I feel before my career's over, I'd love to become an Olympian. That is, that is my, main, my main dream and goal of my athletics career, I guess. Um, I'd like to be remembered for the, for the, I guess, for the hard work that I've put in over the years and where I've come from, from being a junior that wasn't um, particularly talented and making GB teams to, to hopefully where I get to in the next few years. Uh, Charlotte Arter there, discussing her Olympic ambitions with Jenny Nesbitt, and we are joined by Jenny Nesbitt. Jenny, how are you doing? Welcome. Hi, yeah, welcome. Thank you for having me. Would you say she's a friend, competitor? How would you sum up your relationship with Charlotte? Uh, well, I'd always put her friend first, competitor second, but um, yeah, every time I stand next to her on the start line, I do want to beat her. <laughs> That's, that's that's only fair enough and uh, she's obviously gunning for Tokyo Tokyo isn't on your radio but the Commonwealth Games is next year in 2021 2022 sorry how is the preparation been for that yeah the preparation's been really well uh, gone really well so far um, I'm just kind of trying to find the right race to right to run the standards um, which I'm very very close to I mean I've run one of the standards in the 5k already so I just need to do it again and I've got a really good opportunity next weekend uh, in the Olympic trials actually over the 10,000 meters to, to nail the standard there as well. What sort of standard times are we talking? Uh, so we're talking 32 and a half minutes for the, for the 10,000 meters really quick. Uh, and 15 and a half minutes for the 5k so yeah think about going down to the park run every Saturday and trying to nail that time. <laughs> that is that is heinously quick uh, most people can't even run 5k in your 10k time so Fair play. It's been a great weekend of athletics. What have been your What have you been watching this weekend, and who, who stood out for you? Yeah, there's been two really, really good events this weekend. Uh, firstly, there was the Diamond League in Gateshead yesterday, um, and it's the first time it's been in Gateshead actually since 2010, which was really exciting and a great thing for Great Britain. Um, so. Uh, Archer Jake Smith was actually competing in the men's 5,000 meters, and he ran a PB in 
hor horrendous conditions. He ran uh, 13 minutes and 38 seconds, which was a nine second PB for him. Um, so after about a month after running about a 211 marathon, he's, you know, back on the track running a 5K. So that was a fantastic, fantastic race from him. Um, and secondly, there was the Loughborough International this weekend, which was like a home nations competition. So it was England versus Wales versus Scotland. And there were a few Welsh archers down there as well. Uh, firstly, we had uh, Joe Breyer uh, in the men's 400 metres, and he finished in a solid third place in 46 88. Great, great result from Joe. Um, secondly, we had Adele Nicol, who abs absolutely smashed it. First place in the in the women's shot, um, throwing 16 metres 14. And a uh, little fact there, she actually turned to the bobsleigh as well last year. Uh, so she's combining both sports at the moment, which makes that even more of an outstanding result. Um, and to rival her, Mika Moore was also there, who was another one who's been to the Olympics, I believe, in the bobsleigh. Yeah, she's a multi multi, multi athlete. Yeah, yeah. Um, and she she was in the women's 200 meters. She placed fifth in 24:96. And then the, finally, we had Sam Gordon in the men's uh, 100 meters. And after a false start initially, he he managed to finish fourth in 10:52. Some great results there for some uh, ex archers. It's really great to see. Now there's a lot of big events coming up, including one uh, Olympic Games. Uh, what who are you most looking forward to watching, and, and what events? are you going to be uh, keeping an eye on? Yeah, I'm I'm so excited to watch it. And there's so many events that I'm really excited to see. The the dis the depth in distance running overall is fantastic in both the men and women's events. So both the 10, 10K uh, and the 5K will be really exciting. Um, also the sprints, Dana Asher-Smith is, you know, go gunning for gold in the women's 100 metres and she's coming into some really good shape. She also won the, the 100 last night in, in the Diamond League in Gateshead. So, yeah, I'm really excited to, to see what goes, goes on there. Uh, it, should be, it should be a great event. And one person we're hoping to get there is, is Joe Breyer, Joe Breyer the flyer, McDonald's enthusiast. We caught up with a 400-meter runner early in the year to see how his preparation and how he got into the sport. I'm Joe Breyer. Um, I'm 22 years old. I'm from Neath in South Wales, and I'm a 400-meter sprinter. I started when I was really young actually, I was about 9 or 10 years old. Uh, my mum was running at the time um, and she sort of took my sister down to the tracks. My sister's a few years older than me. Uh, so they were both uh, training and stuff. My mum then quit and started coaching, helped coaching my sister. Um, I thought, you know what, I'll give this a go. So I started um, sprinting and I was quite bad, I wasn't any good at all. So I was still doing my rugby, my football, uh, cricket and everything on the side and then decided then I wasn't really good at those either so I was concentrating more on athletics and it sort of kicked off then when I was about 15 years old started running quick. It's pretty intense at the moment uh, I sort of train six days a week uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and then Sunday so Saturday's the day off and it's sort of I run on a track three days a week go to the gym three days a week um, but it's pretty intense but I love doing it so it's not like a pain at all. I'd say personally it was two weeks ago at the European Championships where I did the 400 meters and the 4x400 meters. Um, we picked up a, a bronze medal in the relay which is pretty cool, that was unexpected and we were really happy with that. Um, but the 400 meters didn't go to plan, it was pretty tough heat, I didn't manage to get through but I'll, I'll learn from it and move on to the next one. For me it's just being able to run as fast as possible. Um, I've always loved winning, <laughs> running fast and beating people so yeah it's just that competitive edge um, in being able to race people and also the social side like you go away on these trips like to the Europeans, the World Championships and you're sharing um, hotel with some like amazing athletes you get to meet so many different people and yeah it's such a great experience being able to compete at that level. Yes, my inspiration is probably uh, Ewan Thomas, the British 400 meter record holder. Because uh, one, because he's you know he's Welsh, he's a Welsh guy, he's got the British record. And two, he's just he's, I've spoken to him a few times. He's just such a lovely guy, and he's also um, a good presenter on the TV as well. So yeah, he's a it sort of fits into my bracket pretty well. And so my main goal at the moment is to compete at the European under 23 championships because lucky enough I'm still young, uh, young enough to do that so hopefully I can go there and uh, possibly win that or just pick up a medal which I'll be really happy with and then also to be part of the 
Great Britain 4x4 relay at the Tokyo Olympics. Uh, Joe Breyer there discussing his Olympic ambitions and his uh, Ewan Thomas is a firm favourite with him. Now from athletics on to rugby and Cardiff Met have not one, but four former students hoping to be on the plane for Tokyo. So you have Dan Bibby and Richard de Carpentier, a part of a 21-man squad of the men, hoping to go one better than the silver medal they got in Tokyo in 2016, in Tokyo, in Rio 2016. And the women, they both have Heather Fisher from England and Wales' Jasmine Joyce, who are hoping to be part of the women's squad that try to go one better than the fourth place they got in, uh, to in Rio in 2016. So one thing to note about those two squads, they are on equal pay, which is a first in rugby union, which is fantastic to see. And sticking with rugby now, Jordan Jones caught up with Caitlin Lewis, who is part of the Wales Six Nations women's squad and scored a try on a debut against Scotland back in the Six Nations. Kingoy Campus, the home for Buck Super Rugby and the stomping ground for many internationals, such as Alex Dombrand and Jasmine Joyce. For the past year, however, this pitch has laid idle, with no competitive rugby. It has been a difficult year for many students here at Cardiff Metropolitan University, but also afar. Plenty sporting athletes have seen major tournaments or years of hard work thrown away just because of the coronavirus pandemic, which has decimated and shortened the careers of many. Caitlin Lewis, a winger for Cardiff Mets Bucks rugby squad, however, is an exception to that. She recently represented Wales in the Women's Six Nations. Caitlin was called up to the squad despite last playing competitive rugby for the Archers in March 2020. The 21-year-old, who comes from Ammonford, scored a try in Wales' 27-20 defeat to Scotland, marking a key moment in the career of the performance analysis student. It was a really amazing feeling. Um, everyone in the team worked really hard for that try right at the min uh, last minute of the game, so it was a proud moment, definitely. <laughs> It's not easy balancing full-time education and representing your country, but it's always an honour to play for Wales, so you've got to do what you've got to do. Caitlin's Bucks coach, Lisa Newson, who also played for Wales, says it was testament for her to be involved in the camp and her lack of match action. However, there now needs to be improvements on the player pathway to create more elite opportunities for players like her. I think that Caitlin's uh, situation speaks to the fact that there isn't enough opportunity in Wales and I feel like there is a lack of support or lack of understanding from the governing body's perspective that actually the what we're asking these girls to do is a lot. It's great to see that Cardiff Metropolitan University, despite all the adversity that it has faced during this pandemic, still goes strong and keeps showing that archer spirit. Jordan Jones at Kinkoy Campus. Caitlin Lewis there. Now, it's not just rugby union players that Cardiff Met have been producing. They've also been producing rugby league players with Larry Norkett involved in the Wales women's 36-person squad. I'm joined by rugby league correspondent Ethan Harris. Ethan, welcome. How are we doing? Yeah, I'm doing very well, thank you, Chris. Thanks for having me. It's an absolute pleasure, Ethan. Now, Ethan, you've been in, down at Welsh women's camp filming and, and involved there. How is the squad looking and, and what, are, what are the news down, down that way? Well, it's been very interesting so far, Chris, because, uh, as you mentioned, Larry Norkett is one of the Cardiff Met uh, female players in that squad that she's been included. And uh, it's been going very well for them. They're preparing for their first ever game against England, uh, which will be held in Warrington on the 25th of June. So they're preparing for that game and their camp starts this Saturday. And how do you rate their chances going into that fixture against England? Well, it's their very first time playing against England, so England, you know, have um, have a lot of experience in terms of in terms of how long they've been active uh, as an organisation. So, whilst it is their first fixture, it's great just for everybody, everybody just to sort of get involved and get that camp feeling going for the first time. And we've touched on Larry Knockett. Is there any other players that are potentially going to stand out in that fixture for Wales who we should keep an eye on? Well, one of the players who you should be keeping an eye on is perhaps Charlie Mundy or uh, Savannah, Savannah Ledsam. Uh, they're two very, very interesting players who I've been noticing in the trial games have been standing out for, for Wales Rugby League. And uh, some of them have played in both codes. Uh, so, you know, they're, they're very, very much the ones to keep an eye on. 
So yeah, and you've also been not just looking at the women, you've been looking at the men's and the, and the wheelchair teams. You know, how, how have they been shaping up? Yeah, it's very interesting for those two. Uh, the men's side will have their Rugby League World Cup ambitions later on this year in November and October. So they'll be playing uh, in Group D against the Cook Islands, uh, Papua New Guinea and Tonga. And with the wheelchair squad, they've got the Celtic Cup coming up in, uh, later this year as well in June, which will be June 12th. They'll be defending that for the fifth time, hopefully. Uh, which will be, uh, then they'll play two weeks later, sorry, in England at the English Institute of Sport, which will be against, uh, I believe it will be against Scotland and Ireland, which is where that will be held. And then later in the year, they will have um, a few games against France and the USA, as well as Scotland for the first time, uh, which will be, sorry, this <laughs> USA and France will be the first time they play against them. Well, I'm looking forward to watching the Rugby League World Cup. And you said that's in November, was that right? Yes, so that'll be uh, getting underway uh, just about the end of uh, October and then we'll be kicking on through November all the way through the end of that. Well, you uh, caught up with, early in the year, you caught up with the Women's Super League coach for the new Welsh women's team. Uh, let's find out what Ethan had to say in that conversation. Thomas Brindle, head coach, Wales Women's Rugby League. Great, it's, it's outstanding. I'm uh, really enjoying it. The girls are really in good mood, they're positive, they're taking on what we're doing, the intensity is starting to ramp up uh, and they're starting to put what we're, we're hoping to put into women to practice. So, yeah, really pleased about where we're travelling so far. It's been a hard time for everyone, a long period of time out. Um, I've not as much access to the gyms as they would have liked. Equally, um, obviously, we're starting to ramp up and the intensity is ramping up, so it's fine. It's, we knew this was happening as part of our planning. Um, they will continue to learn, they'll come back in when they're ready, and we'll go from there. The, the RFL as part of their wider role is looking to expand women's rugby league. We wanted to increase or introduce elite women's competition to the south. We felt the best way to do that was create a competition which is obviously the Bedford Women's Super League South. Six teams involved, shortened season this year that we'll look to build as we go through the years, hopefully build into something bigger in the years to come. Each, each club should play to home and away, and then they'll go to a semi-final and a final. So there's a split east and west, three in the west, three in the east. They'll play home and away, so four fixtures. They'll play then a semi-final with a final, uh, hopefully somewhere in London. Yeah, we've got three more sessions um, booked in after today. Um, one of those sessions will I'll have some form of inter game uh, we will play from there we'll end up selecting a squad of 24 that squad of 24 will then go into camp and we'll have a couple of training sessions before our game versus England so um, yeah so we're building towards that point after we play the game versus England everyone will come back in and then we'll have a series of training sessions throughout the summer as we build towards hopefully some in autumn internationals so yeah three more in well two well three more intense weekends before we look to drop to 24. Fantastic to see a, a potential women's rugby league team coming to Wales. What is that going to do for the nation? Yeah, it's going to be great, Chris. You know, uh, Wales is predominantly, it's, it's North Walian if you look at a rugby league in that sort of sense. So basically having a, a team in the sort of South Wales area, it'll be great for expanding the sport in terms of uh, Welsh uh, participation. Well, Ethan, we've got a fantastic summer of sport coming up. Any fixtures you're looking forward to? I think the two that stand out to me, Chris, would be uh, the Euros, of course, with uh, watching Wales. That would be amazing to see if they can repeat what they did last time. And uh, I think the Lions fixtures as well, you know, you can never really turn down a great Lions tour and hopefully it'll be one just as dramatic as the one in uh, New Zealand. Fantastic. Well, I, for one, are certainly looking forward to that Lions tour. Uh, here are the fixtures up on screen, but it's going to be a, a salivating summer of sport. Uh, we've got Cardiff City versus Swansea City on Wednesday. And then we have the uh, playoff final on Saturday. Swansea City involved in that. And then on Monday, it is Newport versus Morecambe in the other League Two playoff. Uh, I, for one, can't wait for a huge summer of sporting fixtures from Wimbledon all the way through to the Olympic Games and then on to the Paralympics. So it's going to be an epic summer of sport. So, yeah, that's all for us here at Cardiff Met Sports TV. Thanks for watching at the Archer. Stay fit, stay safe, and have a wonderful summer. Okay, I've been working like three jobs. Probably why I never see ya. Probably why I never have time for the fake friends I won't be ya. Oh God, I've been running now. Up early when the sun is out. Not setting out my own soul, but those real ones, they coming out. Oh look, who's reaching out? Old friends wanna feature now. They don't work, so they need it free. Ooh, you reaching out from the
the west side of that old town where there's no show So I go down to the open mic show love to the real ones they know now Some of y'all don't know now, in a couple months you gonna find out Been blowing up from the underground that they stepping on a landmine now